Okay, we are reconvening the public session. Roll call. All board members are present, so we have a quorum for tonight's meeting. Public comments on agenda and non agenda items. Pursuant to board policy number 2350, public comment may be limited to five minutes per person or 30 minutes per topic. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting at which the agenda item is called. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter not on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting for open forum on non-agenda items. Public comment cards are available at the information table at the rear of the boardroom from the recording secretary or online. Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Mr. Buffalo. Stand with your hand over your heart. Again with me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Agenda approval, may I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five guest votes. Item 10, open forum on non agenda items. I have one card, Aurora Bird. Good evening. Can you hear me? All right, um, I would like to speak about something that maybe we haven't heard about in a while. Surprise, surprise, I'm not gonna talk to you about COVID right this minute. I'm sure you're all relieved by that. Um, I wanted to speak about AP 2510. Um, so for people unaware, the college has a set of sort of governing documents, the board policies and administrative procedures. And I wanted to bring forward an ongoing concern and I hope to spark curiosity perhaps in some of the board members or other people present. In particular, AP 2510 covers participation in local decision-making, in particular, the workings of the College Coordinating Council or CCC. Um, it covers a bunch of other things as well, but in particular, CCC. Um, it covers membership. Um, there are seven listed members for CCC. Um, the, superintendent, the superintendent or president and or vice presidents uh, representing the board of trustees, that's the first one, the academic senate president, the administrative council representative, the president of the faculty exclusive bargaining unit, the president of the classified exclusive bargaining unit, the CMS unit representative, and the ASO representative. It also covers how the college coordinating council works. In particular, it states that the council shall seek consensus as the basis for making decisions. However, when consensus cannot be reached, the council may take action if six out of seven council members are in agreement. When a resolution before the council does not have the required six out of seven members in favor, the status quo remains in effect until such time as a mutually acceptable resolution can be negotiated and agreed to by six of the seven members of the council. It goes on to say that all council members have a single vote and the meetings of the council shall be open. I do have a point to this. This also covers timelines. Um, in particular, um, it says each committee will also circulate a call for agenda items five working days prior to a meeting and distribute to members and post an agenda two working days prior to a meeting. Each committee will also distribute to members and post a draft of unapproved minutes within 10 working days after a meeting. Um, I have concerns about the function of CCC this semester. First, agendas frequently list multiple members and attendees. A recent agenda listed 11 committee members and the ABC website lists 10. AP 2510 itself spef specifies seven. Um, second, meetings have included a verbal request for agenda items for the next meeting. But Wednesday's upcoming meeting is the first I've seen this semester to have an official call for agenda items. Thirdly, meetings 
have had their agendas and their minutes posted late. When I've tried to speak up about these issues, I'm accused of being obstructionist and told that this committee doesn't operate under the Brown Act. No, it doesn't operate under the Brown Act, but it is supposed to operate under AP 2510. I firmly believe that college committees do need to follow the administrative procedures of the college. It's not obstructionist to ask and expect that the college follow its own procedures. Thank you. Thank you. Item 11, presentations. Item 11.1, .1, presentation of constitutional essay contest winners. Is that it? Cool. Uh, it's so great to be back. I just want to just tell you this, how happy I am just to be standing in here and just being in the presence of you. Uh, I, I just I just feel great. If I could, I would hug all of you right now. Um, so I'm really excited. And I just wanted to share with you a couple of great outstanding stories about our students and what we've been doing. <clears throat> and before I get started, I just want to tell you a little background about the essay real quick. The constitutional essay program uh, was actually originated years before Ed got here, but we never really got it. And then one day, Ed Knudsen just dropped this little constitution booklet on my, in my office and just said, hey, let's do an essay contest and I'll give $100. And <clears throat> that was like nine years ago, I believe. And, uh, you know, when we started doing this, we got like four or five submissions. Uh, you know, we got a you know, couple, it wasn't really, really a, a big turnout uh, of students. And then this year uh, with Dr. Zimmerman and ASO, they're just so grateful and so supportive. And Dr. Zimmerman has always been uh, someone who's been very active behind the scenes with this particular uh, contest. Uh, it's ponying up this idea that, well, we'll get $500 for the first place, $300 for the uh, second place, $100 for third place, $50 for fourth place, $25 for you know, fifth place, which was awesome, right? And uh, I just have to just share this with you. Every year I've had maybe, maybe 19 essays. At the most, I think we had 19 essays. And I had eight readers, and I just wanna just share this with you. Eight readers from different faculty members across, across the discipline. I was like, oh, this will take you like, you know, less than a day. It will be an easy, easy project. Well, lo and behold, when we put out this new essay uh, and this, the amount of money that we were offering, we got over a hundred submissions. Uh, needless to say, and the faculty members that read this were shocked. And when I had to tell them that we had to have this done in four days, uh, and some of them being English majors were great. Uh, but I just want to tell you, it was just fascinating to see this. And it's just such a nice thing to just see how wonderful our students are, you know, and you just think about just the interactions that we have. And, and, and I just have to just tell you this SOAR school is killing it right now. SOAR just kind of cleaned up uh, the top four spots, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, but I just wanted to just Thank Ed and Dr. Uh, Zimmerman for just the, 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 you know, the innovation behind this and, and, and constantly asking me to continue doing this. And it's been a lot of fun and it's been a great way to interact with our students. And I just wanted to tell you, some of the readers are Tawana Catley, Heidi Williams, Nari Caseforth, Ellen Coleman, Dr. Ellen Coleman, Dr. Matthew Jaffe, Dr. Ken Schaefer, uh, Ray Agahari, uh, Mark Hoffer, and my colleague, Fritz Hemker. So we were the readers and we had this cross board, cross discipline. And um, if I may, <clears throat> I just want to call up the students one by one, if you could all come up when I tell you to. Um, the first one is not here right now. Her name's Haley Gonzalez, and Haley came in fifth place. And Haley is a poli-sci major, and she is splitting her time between Cal State Long Beach and AVC. Uh, and she works full-time, 40 hours a week, as a teller at um, <clears throat> uh, Wells Fargo. So she's juggling this, and she decides it. And Haley were former students of both uh, Fritz and I. So she was the fifth place. Rocio Riviera, I don't know if I need to say much about her, but I'd love her to come up. <laughs> and I just wanted to sort of tell you something about Rocio. I mean, I know the board knows her, right? And, and I mean, she's amazing, right? She's a superwoman. She's just, a, 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 just got a bright, bright future. Rocio won this two years ago. Okay, so she won the first essay. And then it's funny, she just keeps raking in the money from these operations. Um, but I just want you to tell, I've had, I've had the opportunity to teach Rocio for uh, three classes with her, but she's applying to Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, just to name a few schools of what she's doing. <clears throat> Misan, can you please come on up, buddy? Everybody, this is Misan. He is a SOAR student. 
And Nissan uh, is right now just trying to figure things out. He's a liberal arts science major. Uh, he plans on applying to various UCs. Uh, he's only a junior. So I think he's got another shot at the, at the uh, essay net requirements next year. And uh, he loves playing basketball and listening to music in his free time. So this is Misan. Morgan Carter, can you come on up? Stay up here, Misan. Morgan Carter is a biochemistry uh, major. This is what she wants to study. Uh, she plans to go to the UCs and she has a passion for reading, drawing, and painting as well. And finally, the winner of it, of this is Angela Ortiz. Can you come on up, Angela? <laughs> Angela is a liberal arts major. She's studying humanities and she wants, she's really into art. And so she really, her goal one day is maybe to hopefully study art in London and she enjoys painting and playing games. So I just wanted to just introduce all of them to you. This was a really great opportunity. And I just really thank uh, Ed and, and, and Zimmerman for expanding this program, for, for providing the money and getting us. And I just have to tell you, the, the SOAR, just SOAR won four out of the top five spots. I just want to let, put that out there. Like that was pretty impressive. And I do will just say this one thing. There were probably within points, this could have changed within points. Uh, I mean, they were, the essays were so close to the top. 20 were so close. We're just talking about one tenth of a score. So, I mean, out of eight different readers, this was pretty impressive how we all lined up and, and, and picked these students. So, um, members of the board, I just wanted to thank you for this time and, and, and uh, thank you for having these wonderful students. So, thank you very much, Patty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They already have their money. <laughs> Thank you. Item 11.2, enrollment update. Good evening, President, Board President uh, Adams, trustees, President Knudsen, thank you for the opportunity to share a few words about enrollment. Uh, and congratulations to the students. That's an uh, impressive group there. And also thanks to the faculty that are involved in the reading. Um, I wanted to just share a little bit about uh, enrollment and given that we're in declining enrollment right now and have been for many years from high school seniors to dealing with the pandemic and then looking at the, the system itself losing over 300,000 students in 2021, nearly 15%, um, it's important that we keep enrollment on the, on, on the agenda. Um, so, as you all know, enrollment management, enrollment itself is a participatory process, event, activity to include everyone. So we have, as you see, the amazing faculty who are constantly doing different things to in engage students, to bring them uh, to campus, to engage, and they, they attract students, the programs attract students. And so it's an it's a all hands on deck activity and uh, it's very much appreciated, whether it's the programs and STEM, the nursing program, the uh, respiratory tech program. Uh, these are the programs that, some of the programs that attract our students. So it's, it's all hands on. And enrollment management is not something that we ever turn off. So it, it, we, we never turned it off. We keep it going. We're always trying to be innovative. We're coming up with new ideas, but we keep it going at all times. And just to um, get us to oh, I gotta turn ABC, as you all saw in previous, and you definitely can't see that, but basically 2021, as you know already, we lost over 3,000 students. And that's, uh, we heard about the, the fiscal impact of that and how of, a, of an emergency it really is if we don't increase enrollment. Um, we've, we've seen many presentations on that. There's also a human cost in that because there are students like the ones you just saw who are not in class right now, are not at the college. And we just happen to believe that this is the best place to transform their lives. So we, we want them here. We are trying to get them back for, the, for what we can do to them, what it, what, what it does for the community. The community expects that we have over 500 transfer students a year and thousands and thousands of, of degrees uh, every year. And so it's, um, it's a big deal and we're not taking it lightly. Um, so th this is why we always keep, keep it on. And this, this here is just a few colleges to compare. You see we're all over the place in terms of colleges 
with declining enrollment, some as high as 30 and some not uh, as high, but it's you know pretty much we're all experiencing the same thing. I work very closely on the board with the CSSOs and we, 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 we discuss our enrollment, we discuss strategies and, and we're all pretty much doing the same things. We're all pretty much facing the same experiences. Um, but so I also wanna just give you a glimpse of what it's looking like in 2021, what it was looking like. Uh, so I included some demographics because I think it's important to know who are we missing? Who, who's not here? Where are they at? And so there's a, just a little data there. And like uh, California, we're also experiencing a larger decline in male students, African-American students. And uh, not like, we're, we're a little bit unique in this way where we have a higher declining uh, of uh, white students. And so um, we, we pay attention to who's not, who are we not serving in the community? And then we have different approaches to how we engage those different groups. So um, some of the strategies, you know, we, we, we look at the whole student and when they first, we first identify them uh, from recruitment to um, enrolling, retention to completion. And it's important that we have a lot of programs and services all along the way to retain them because we don't want to start from scratch over and over again. So we have to treat our students well when they're here. Like what you just saw the presentation is happening uh, in many places around the campus. Um, I won't read all of them because you all have it, but I just want to name a, mention a few things. I was very excited when um, we sent a reminder for registration via text. Um, students, you know, they, we have, we're on social media, we're, we're, we're beginning to text, but we're going to ramp it up quite a bit when we get oscillate. Um, but with that, we have to talk what's going to work best for them. And so we do social media. Marketing has done an amazing job. They're very responsive when we have ideas and suggestions and strategies, um, as well as ITS. Um, so in the marketing, is, as we mentioned, very intentional in, in everything we're doing. We're looking at the data to see, you know, where, where do we need to market? How do we need to market? And we do those things. Um, some of the outreach efforts, and you all see this in your packet, but these are things that go on all the time. The, the, the daily calls to students. When just because a student enrolls, it doesn't mean that they're going to, or excuse me, that they apply. It doesn't mean that they're going to enroll in class. So our our, our outreach, our first, second year experience, they do an amazing job making sure that not only do they apply, but we get them to enroll and we assist them all along the way. We, we attend the community events, uh, 2SK uh, is one of our larger events, and we're hoping to get it back to what it once was, where we have uh, you know, over a thousand students participate and they're engaged and they take, place, they take part in our first and second year experience. Um, we also do a course of the high school visits and team up with the, the STEM conference and, and assist and take advantage of them being on our campus. Uh, and you see some of the different activities. So there's registration assistance as a Reg Week, and then uh, VP Saber led Reg Fest, where we had students come on a particular day, and we'll do it again at Palmdale, which is uh, you know a, a target area that we need to target to make sure that we're providing all the resources and exposure to the Palmdale population as well. Um, and so some of the categorical uh, work that we've done is every student from 2020 that either took an emergency withdrawal or uh, didn't enroll in fall, we called them and we said, you know, how can we get you back? How can we help you? What do you need? And we were able to get over 3,000 calls. We were able to get 600 students that had no indication they were going to return. They didn't register. They didn't take advantage of their appointment. So we don't know if they were going to come, but they did come after this work. And so I, I really want to just commend, as part of what I want to do today, is commend the efforts that are happening. And we are in a pandemic, so it doesn't always look like the efforts are taking place, but they absolutely are. Um, and if there's anything that's that, uh, any activity that's going on that, that we're not doing, we certainly want to know so we can do that. Um, we also expand the use of the different uh, platforms to make sure that we can reach the students that do not want to come to campus. So when we're closed, we really ramp that up quite a bit as well. And this is just a quick shot. You can't see it, but you probably, hopefully you can your packet. But this is just shows the different programs and, and uh, the, the collaborative work that's happening between the programs for recruitment, outreach, retention, 
And so that way we could uh, better collaborate and better plan. Um, and some of the additional uh, efforts that we've made um, before the pandemic, but we continue to do that, I think is very important. We, we're pushing students to take 15 units. We're telling them the advantages, the, the completion advantages, the financial advantages, because there are students that if they just take one more class, one more class, they can get $4,000 more. And it's not all about the money, but for, for many students, it is all about the money. It allows them to come here. It allows them to uh, not have to work as much. I mean, we all have the stores where we have students that are working a couple of days a week and only taking a half a load when they could have made more money just going to, going to uh, taking a full load on, on campus or, or working on campus. So we're always trying to uh, continue to remind them of the benefits. One of the things we're doing with EDUNAV is uh, we've asked them to do a opt out. So if a student registers for under 15 units, say a student registered for six, then we're gonna give them reminders of the things I just mentioned, like how much they can get if they, they could receive from the completion grant or from financial aid, and then give them the research of how they're more likely to graduate if they take a full load. Um, sometimes they don't, they don't kind of, uh, I, I mean, I get it, life happens. Some students can only take five, six, 12 units or three units, and we're gonna support that. But we wanna make sure that they know what they're losing out on or potentially losing out on if they don't take a full load. Um, one more thing that was, uh, well, two things. One we're doing uh, new this year is we're sending every high school senior a letter that in the high school district that basically welcomes them to AVC, saying congratulations. Having been a high school administrator, I remember some of the seniors, and I was a senior once too, almost a senior again, but I was a senior once where, in my experience working in the high school, where students kind of forget to plan after high school. They're enjoying their last few months so well that they just, that, that, that some don't plan. So um, we're going to kind of remind them, hey, it's time to get going again. And their parents are gonna probably read the letters as well. And I'm sure they're gonna push them out the door to ABC and we're gonna assist them when they get here. Uh, not just getting them here, but uh, supporting them along the way. And uh, one other thing that was, uh, was, was powerful is that uh, uh, VP Saver organized a faculty uh, presentation on our ideas of what can we do with enrollment. Uh, Shami presented and scared everybody regarding the budget uh, and declining enrollment. And then I presented some of the things that we're doing in student services. And, uh, and then we just say, hey, what, what ideas do you have? And the, the main thing is that we, we have, we're, again, we're all hands on. It takes us all. And I have to tell you that I'm very happy with the work that's being done in the areas in particular that I, because I see it closer that I oversee, um, they're, they're, they're not taking any breaks. They're, they're, the pandemic is not an excuse. Uh, we're gonna continue to do the best job we can to make sure that we get more students um, here enrolled in the campus. Any questions? Any questions or comments from the board, yeah. uh, Mr. Reed? Uh, thank you for the presentation, mm -hmm. Vice President. <clears throat> You know, I've listened to about 30 webinars since I've been on the board for about a year. Mm -hmm. And this problem is statewide, mm -hmm. uh, like 20% at some colleges where they've lost 20% of their. I'm interested, you have the statistics uh, of the loss of students that are enrolled in community colleges that are primarily trade tech type colleges. Do you have any idea how many people they lost? No, I don't. I, I, I tend to focus on the uh, community colleges, uh, um, but I'd imagine that uh, they're experiencing a similar. That's a good question because uh, I haven't looked at it, but I don't uh, know if. Oh, okay. Uh, when we dedicated uh, Sage Hall the other few weeks ago, they passed out this little book with the packet, and it listed the 10, the top 10 declared majors at Antelope Valley College. Number one was registered nursing. Mm -hmm. You can get a job tomorrow with that. Mm -hmm. uh, biology and biological services, you could probably get a lab, get a lab job with that. Administration of justice, you could probably get probation with that. Um, aircraft fabrication, sure, you get a job tomorrow if you get through that program. And uh, child and family education. So about five of these, you can get a job tomorrow. 
are, are near tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we can focus in the future on these jobs, because in one of these webinars, I think the acting chancellor of the system mm -hmm. went to a college in the San Fernando Valley and she talked to the students. And one of the students said something that impressed her. Will this help me get a job? And I think that's what they're looking for now. They don't have time to goof off and go to college for six years and come out with 120 units with no job. Uh, we're gonna have to offer it to students. We're doing everything right, recruiting, providing everything we can, but we have to have a curriculum where they feel like they can get out of here in two years and get a job, make a living. And a lot of these students are low income students and they have to do it. It's not something they want to do. They have to get a job. Okay, thank and you. Trust Reeves, I, I have to tell you that it's, ABC is doing its part. Not to say that we can't improve and do better because we always can, but we do have great statistics on uh, uh, career to work or work to career, sorry. Um, we're also looking at those professions where they have to retool because maybe the pandemic has changed what they can do. Maybe they don't wanna be vaccinated. Okay? Now they have to go in a different career. Um, we're doing targeted advertising. We met with marketing uh, just last week to talk about some of, uh, you know, what are we advertising and, and who can we target? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, Dr. Vines, on, I don't know where the page isn't numbered, but on your page where it has the age groups uh, yes. and it starts with 19 or less and you've got 34.4%. Um, and I'm assuming this is for 20, fall of 2021 as, as stipulated there. Can you compare for me or give me a, a, a comparison to what that age bracket, what was the enrollment like, let's say 2019-20, pre-COVID in the fall of 2019, what was our percent of 19 or less enrolling at ABC? You know, I don't have that off the top of my head, but I'm going to tell you that's probably not too much less than 34% because that's going to be many of our SOAR students, special admits, and then also our, 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 our first-time freshmen. Um, when I was looking at the, the high school yields, we were about 30%, um, but I don't have it yet. Uh, for, I actually put a request in, but I don't have it for uh, uh, 20, but we ha I don't have it for 2020, 21, 22, because it'd only be looking at fall. But for 2021, um, I don't have that one yet, the yeah, high school I, yield. Yeah, I was talking about 2019, the fall. My, my, my thought is, and I could be wrong, that's why I was asking, is that the number would be higher in uh, 19 or less than it enrollees. Is pre-COVID yes. is what I'm thinking. So I'm, so I think there's, um, in my, in my personal opinion, there is a lot of research out there that would say that, um, online classes mm -hmm. and distance learning has impacted the number of students who want to mm -hmm. attend college period, mm -hmm. whether it's, um, community or, or, uh, Cal State UC. I also wanted to ask you, I think I heard you mention that, uh, did you say that you, the college was uh, reaching out to high schools? Does that mean that we are going to the high schools or are we bringing those students on our campus? Yeah. So during the pandemic, it was more virtual and we're trying to do more face-to-face, -face, but we're still doing a lot of virtual workshops. But if I can real quickly go back to the high school yield, Prior to the pandemic, we were doing what we expected. It was pretty consistent. I just don't know. I'm sure it, it dropped uh, for incoming freshmen. Uh, they were part of that enrollment that dropped, no doubt. As far as um, the outreach efforts, we're still doing a lot of virtual, um, but we're, we are making more face-to-face -face attempts at this, at this point. If they'll have us, we'll, we'll be there, um, but there's still a lot of virtual. And we keep the virtual because uh, we're able to do more with the virtual. So we still have that uh, in our library, if you will. I, I think that there may have been, um, if, you, if you look at the, um, some of the data from high, from high schools around, mm -hmm. uh, many of the students um, during um, COVID distance learning did not do well. Many of the grades, there was a decrease in grades 
some of them perhaps may have seen why would I continue that if that's what they're also offering at the community college. I didn't do well with it. We know there was uh, there's tremendous learning loss that occurred during that time. My, my question is, I remember about six years ago, six or seven years ago, I brought busloads of eighth graders to this campus. I don't know if you'll remember that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Vines, I they do. were fed lunch mm -hmm. with their parents mm -hmm. and their parents got a tour of the community college. And I remember parents making statements such as, oh, and, oh my God, I had no idea they had this program or that program. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was more like seeing was believing for our, our parents um, and the community. I think that the first chance we get to bring our students and our parents on this campus, whether we feed them a Subway sandwich or not, but to really let them explore and especially see some of the new construction and the learning center and all these great things that are happening on our college, we might be able to pull back many of those students and say, hey, we're a great place to be. Just, yeah. just a suggestion. Yeah, absolutely. We're face-to-face -face in spring, and we're going to make a huge effort. And back up to your comment about taking class online and your experience with high school students. When we called those students, and some of them I called myself, because I was really curious about what's going on when we first went the pandemic. They said that they, they don't learn well online. And we often hear uh, different people think, oh, students only go to community college because of financial aid. But these students... Some of them in poverty would rather forego $10,000 and not damage their transcript because that wasn't a good way that they felt they can learn. And we try to support them with uh, different uh, um, avenues of, of online support. But when you look at a full financial aid package, her funding, CARES funding, it ends up being a substantial amount. And the students said, I'd rather wait until you go back face to face. And then there's some students that prefer face to face. So we're, there's no good, there's no easy answer with that. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions for Dr. Vine? Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. Moving on to item 12, report of closed session action. There were no reportable closed session actions taken. Item 13, consent agenda. I have Speaker cards for 13.1 and 13.19. So could I hear a motion to accept and approve consent agenda items 13.2 to 13.18? So moved. Mr. President, I'd like to pull 13.18, 13.19. All right. In that case, may I hear a motion to approve consent agenda items 13.2 to 13.17? So moved. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 13.1, Pamela Ford. Good evening, Board of Trustees, administrators, honored guests, staff, and students. Um, for the record, I would like included in the minutes that my statement during constituent reports was interrupted. It was not just statements made, but interruptions were cut, which cut into my time and my time was not reinstated. It's not reflected in the minutes. That's why I brought it up. I'm gonna suggest that the president review the transcripts for or the audio recording for that uh, meeting to determine whether that's the case or not. As a, as a point, we do not do verbatim minutes. We do action items and annotated minutes. In that case, I'll hear a motion to accept the consent agenda item 13.1 as written. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. And 13.18, revision of board policy 2345, public participation at board meetings, Mr. Reeves. Everyone on this 
microphone. Everyone on this board is here because the people voted for them. We represent the people. And um, it reminds me of uh, an old Saturday Evening Post portrait by Norman Rockwell. And some of the old timers on the board may have remembered it. It's a, it's a man standing up in a crowded meeting. He has suspenders on and a flannel shirt and he's talking and everybody's looking at him. And that's, that's democracy. And we live in a democracy. We also live in a republic where we elect people to represent us. We don't have time to be involved in all the affairs of government. So we elect people to represent us. And they in turn have one employee usually that they hire a president, a CEO to do their batting. I think it's incumbent that the public have as much time as necessary to get up and address the board. We have five minutes now, they wanna cut it down to three. Well, we can rectify some problems. We can devise a form for the public where they can put the topic at the top. It advises them, what do you want the board to do? And then with an explanation. So they would be more organized if, and uh, wouldn't take up so much time, but yet they would have five minutes to discuss the, the uh, item. I've addressed many boards in this valley. Some of the boards give you two minutes, three minutes. We're the only ones that give you five. As far as I'm concerned, you should have all the time you need because it's very difficult to get up in front, in front of these boards, believe me. And you need time to explain yourself. And we sometimes we can't ask, we can answer your questions, but we can't have a dialogue with you. So I would hope that if these two items would be pulled and not voted on tonight. And we think about this before we curtail the right of the public to speak for five minutes. Thank you. Any further Mr. discussion on 13.82? Mr. President, point of order. Uh, since uh, Trustee Reeves addressed both of them together, do you want to take them as a single item and address uh, them together? No, because uh, yes, we, have, please. we have cards on both or on okay. the other item. Um, any other discussion on 13.18? Hearing none, may hear a motion to approve 13.18. Second. Discussion? Advice. I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm sorry, did you say nay? Nay. Passes with four yes votes and one no vote, Mr. Reeves. But I'm 13.19, revision of board policy 2350 speakers, and I have cards from Aurora Bird. Good evening again. I think I'm gonna be somewhat echoing in the vein of what Mr. Reeves just said. Um, it's generally a bad idea, in my opinion, to censor and stifle public comment. A um, Couple of thoughts I'd like to share on that is that this is really the only forum where faculty, staff, students, and the community can speak with you guys and have the opportunity of looking you in the eye while we speak and being sure that you are hearing us. Yes, I know we can send emails and uh, you know snail mail, but we rarely receive replies to that. Not even a you know received thank you. Um, this is a unique forum in terms of our ability to address our elected officials. Um, I would also like to state that in my belief, based on AP 2510, this should not have been advanced to the board. Besides the problems with calls for agenda items and late posting of agendas and draft minutes, AP 2510 does specify that decision-making process for CCC for which six of seven votes must be in favor. Otherwise, the status quo is kept. I spoke against recommending this AP to the board on August 25th and on 
October 13th, I had to leave the meeting at 1031 after its end time for another meeting prior to the vote. My understanding is that the classified union president voted against moving this item to the board. And I was both absent and had spoken against this item on a previous agenda. I'm confused and as to how I could have voted in favor when I wasn't present to get to that six out of seven number. Um, I have asked how this item was advanced to the board without six of seven members in favor. And I've received responses about, you know, consensus and so forth. But when I review AP 2510, I keep seeing that line about six of seven in favor. It doesn't say that, you know, five of seven, it says six of seven. In addition, given that the board agenda for last month should have been finalized in advance of the October 11th board meeting, which was then changed to October 18th, I'm still confused as to how this item got onto the agenda last month because I don't think the timeline even lined up. I, I don't believe this item should be on the agenda at this time, and I believe it should be returned to CCC until there is a six of seven vote in favor of advancement. Um, another issue that I have with this is that usually changes on these items are shown in red in the agenda when you go on board docs and you look at the PDF of it. And I don't see that right now. It's like all in black and I don't see the strikethroughs or changes shown. And I think that's misleading and not the tone we should be taking here. So I would urge you to amend tonight's agenda to return this item to CCC until such time as CCC does vote in accordance with AP 2510, six of seven in favor to advance this item to the board. Thank you. Good evening again. I did indeed vote against this moving forward for all the reasons that Aurora just stated. I'm not sure of the district or board's intention to limit public speaking to a maximum of three minutes. In some districts, when an individual is speaking on behalf of groups, the speaker is allowed 10 minutes if they're speaking for a large body. I have observed at the Board of Governors meeting that although there are many speakers, some expressing positions maybe against or in opposition to what either the chancellor or the Board of Governors is discussing, I've never observed the, any level of disrespect toward the speaker. Over the years here at ABC, there have been occasions in which the public as well as staff have presented opposing positions to the Board of Trustees. And not once has the Board of Trustees ever limited the length of time individuals speak. It was a time with different leadership and opposing positions were respected. It was always within the five minutes. The issue for the board to consider is the actions of district leadership when many individuals come forward to present an opposing position. The lesson is like throwing out the baby with the bathwater because maybe you don't wanna hear the message that's being presented. The length of time a person speak is not going to force individuals to agree if they have an opposing position. Therefore, as the president for, classified, for the classified bargaining unit, I respectfully request that the board consider not limiting public comment to three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. I hear a motion to approve agenda item 13.19. So moved. Is there a second? Seeing no second, 13.19 is removed from the agenda. Item 14, action items. 14.1, approval of academic policies and procedures, AP and P, committee's recommendations, of course, listing. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.2, approval of resolution 21-22-6, resolution to lay out positions. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? I have a speaker card, Pam Ford.
I'm speaking. Oh, I take this off. <laughs> I'm speaking as the classified uh, union president on behalf of Christopher Chasen due to the resolution to lay off. It is important that you're aware of the history. For years, Chris has been bringing forth legitimate safety concerns regarding his work environment, which have not been resolved. As an example, one of the most egregious safety concerns was, Chris asked to be provided drinking water during a heat wave. He was given no valid response, so the Federation supported his request and submitted a request for information to the district rega regarding if water was provided. The district response was yes. However, after investigation on the part of the Federation, it was observed that there was no drinking fountain. There was a drinking fountain. The caps were removed. However, when you look up on the wall, there's a sign which denotes the drinking water is not drinkable. Sorry, this mask business. Anyway, so what we'd like to know is since the district's own safety manual clearly states that water is to be provided, why was water not provided? That was a simple request. Chris even asked his supervisor to go to his work area to view the safety issues he presented, which did not happen. And there, was ser there were serious irrigation issues in the greenhouse, to name a few of the concerns that needed to be addressed. When Mr. Chasen initiated a harassment complaint regarding his most recent supervisor, he felt unsafe because she held staff meetings with LA County sheriffs posted outside the door at most of the meetings and her behavior of sarcasm and insults and the meetings were unproductive and there was no clear directives given in pursuit of helping him with the unsafe conditions he reported, not to mention the documented threats of disciplinary action for being out ill. The district first requested a meeting and the Federation followed up with the same request to try and resolve the harassment issues. Along with the response to the request for information, which I'm providing you, which to date there's been no response. Is this how the district treats an employee bringing forward safety, valid safety issues and harassment concerns? Why now, when enrollment has been historically low for this program, have they decided to shut it down? Were you aware there is currently a lab technician in the department working off the books for free to maintain the lab on weekends? There is another lab, lab tech working out a classification. I was just notified of this fact today. The, and the district is currently advertising for a temporary lab tech on NeoGov, which I have right here. That said, the district, also, when you look at the, the actual document for the layoff, there are so many errors in it. Um, for example, this, his seniority date is not correct. There's no option for bumping rights as were afforded the employees laid off from the bookstore. And he is not the least senior lab tech in the bio, biological lab services department. Why is he being laid off? Those are just a few of the errors. You have 30 seconds. Okay, so in light of this erroneously reported lack of work in the biology sciences department and the fact that Mr. Chasen holds seniority within the department, the Federation requests that you as a board of trustees rescind this proposed layoff out of order of seniority and address the safety and harassment issues. And thank you. Thank you. May I hear a motion to approve action item 14.2.
there is. I'm sorry. Was there was there a second alternative? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Discussion. Yes. Just Go ahead. Uh, in the middle of this microphone. Microphone, Mike. Mike. Sorry about that. Uh, Mr. President, in lieu of the information we received here, we need to uh, read this and think about this before we vote on it. So uh, I would hope that we could vote no on it and consider it at the December 10th meeting. Thank you. Any further discussion? Advice? Yes, Mr. President. Sorry. As a point of clarification, the notice of layoff is in advance of discussion or negotiating of effects of the, that layoff in which seniority and other issues would be discussed and decided. And this has nothing to do with health and safety or those kinds of things. The program has been suffering for a long time. The program is in active program discontinuance consideration in the academic Senate. And because of the is severely low enrollment, there will not be courses offered in that discipline for the spring or next fall. Thank you. Any further discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Passes. Passes with three yes votes, two no votes. <clears throat> Mr. Reeves and Ms. Harvey voting nay. 14.3, approval of the Antelope Valley Community College District and Antelope Valley Federation of Classified Employees, 2022-2023 classification, reclassification process timeline. I hear a motion. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.4, approval of the award, award contract to PPL Incorporated for executive search consultant services. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Mr. <clears throat> Reeves. Yeah, it seems like we're going on the same track that we've always gone on to of hiring a, a college president. And we have a search committee, we, we put the word out, we get candidates, the uh, search committee narrows it down, and in, in, in the end, the board decides something. This is a new time uh, in uh, college history. We, I believe that we should, we have many resources out there the community college league, chancellor's office, uh, media, we can uh, put the word out that we have an opening for college president, apply. And if you do apply, you're gonna be given a test to see if you hit the points. And if you hit the points, then you'll be reviewed and interviewed by the board. That's the way to do it. This is the same old process that goes on on all the councils and all the boards up here. We end up with people dis dissatisfied. Uh, I think we could do it differently. I would rather the money be spent to do what I suggested rather than have an executive search do the same stuff that we've always had. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. For the discussion? Yes, Mr. President, make a point of clarification, please. Certainly. The recruitment and replacement of a superintendent president is set forth in board policy and uh, which is directed by the league itself. We subscribe to that service. Further, it is set forth in accreditation standards and governance under standard four. The process of the executive search firm is to conduct a national search. The resources indicated in the prior discussion are statewide searches. The, P the PPL will conduct a nationwide search and the process by which they go through the interview process and selection process is set forth in policy and the accreditation standards. Thank you. Any further discussion? <coughs> Advice. I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. As with four yes votes, one no vote, Mr. Reeves. Item 14.5, approval of contract with MGT of America Consultant LLC for continued services of the classification compensation study for classified employees. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? I have a speaker card, Pamela Ford. <coughs> I'm asking you as board members to not approve this contract as there's a negotiated process in place, which the board of trustees and the federation have agreed to negotiate it and signed off on. The federation intends to ad adhere to the negotiated 
classification process and vehemently objects to the district's continued pursuit of seeking avenues to go around the collectively bargained agreement and thereby willfully participating in a unilateral departure from the contract, which it repeatedly, repeatedly has entered into with the Federation. This matter will lead to an unfair labor practice. So again, we request that this contract not be approved. Thank you. Discussion? Mr. President, Mr. Uh, I think it would be beneficial if we had somebody from this uh, consulting firm come up and explain what, uh, what they actually do. Does anybody know what they do specifically? Uh, I think it should be defeated and these people come up and explain what they're gonna do before we vote to hire them. Thank you. Mr. President, a point of clarity, please. Sure. This contract was awarded over a year ago to for the purpose of classification research only, not to go around the negotiation process purely for research and the collection of information. This is extended and I might ask that uh, Ms. Laura Benson further clarify if she would please where we are and why we need the continuation. Um, yes, um, we have been utilizing the service. They've been researching for us and we, with the change in HR leadership, um, there were a few things that were missed. We're trying to get those few things finished and it's just for a small bit. And that's what this is. It's not to redo the contract. It's for about five, $6,000 to finish the project in total. Thank you. Further discussion? Ed Bike. I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Passes with four yes votes. Mr. Hughes voting nay. 14.6, approval of consultant service agreement for Phaedra Kelly to assist in delivering SCI specialized care and increment trainings via Zoom for the period of November 9th, 2021 to June 30th, 2026. May your motion. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.7, approval of agreement between Shaba, Chabot, Los Positas Community College and Emerald Valley Community College for the California Early Childhood Mentor Program from September 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. May your motion. So moved. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.8, approval of agreement between baby to baby and Animal Valley Community College District to provide donated items to ABC students who have dependent children. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.9, approval of the Memorandum of Understanding between Animal Valley Community College with Foundation for California Community Colleges for the Vision Resource Center project. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Mr. I've, Reeves. I've been uh, advised by legal counsel. Uh, an item like this comes up, I'm going to use the ISP. Um, any further discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with four yes votes and one abstention. Could you please met, let Mr. Reeves back in? No, he can go out again if he wants. Item 14.10, approval of service agreement with Wallace Family Eye Care for services to students. May I hear a motion? So moved. Discussion? Um, President, on advice of counsel, I've been advised to leave the diet. Okay. Further discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with four yes votes, one abstention. 
Can we have Mr. Reeves come back in? Item 1411, approval of agreement with Scion Advisory Services for student housing. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.12, approval of resolution number 21-22-5 with the futility of public bidding for respiratory care simulators. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice. I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.13. Approval to purchase AV equipment and labor installation from Golden Star Technology Incorporated for the boardroom AV refresh with HERF funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice. I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.14. Approval to utilize the Gov Connection piggyback agreement number CNRO1483 with ENI Cooperative Services ENI with her funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.15 approval to negotiate contract with NCX Group for IT security services. With her funds, may your motion. Second. Discussion. Advice. I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Passes with five yes votes. Item fourteen point sixteen, approval of the purchase computer equipment from Dell for with her funds. May your motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Discussion. Advice. I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Passes with the five yes votes. Item 14.17, approval to purchase computer equipment from Apple with her funds. May your motion. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.18, approval to purchase AV equipment and labor installation from Golden Star Technology Incorporated with her funds. May your motion. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.19, approval to enter into an agreement with Amazon Web Services using GSA piggyback contract with her funds. May your motion. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.20, approval to purchase network equipment with any systems incorporated and utilize the any systems piggyback contract with California multiple award schedule CMAS with HERF and major AB funds. May I hear a motion. So moved. Discussion? Advice. I do. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five as votes. Item 14.21 approval to lease quadrant mailing system machine for the district using a cooperative piggyback agreement through NASPO. Value point contract number 80 SPO 16 169901. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.22 Approval of field contract for services with Frontier Communications Corporation on the infrastructure project 17 Zero two nine with major AB funds. May I hear a motion? So moved. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.23. Approval to utilize Polaris Sales Incorporated's piggyback agreement through SourceWell. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.24, approval to utilize the approved cooperative piggyback agreement for Snap-on Industrial, a division of IDSC Holdings in LLC with NASPO value point. May I hear a motion? So moved. Discussion? Advice? I approve. 
All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.25. Approval to extend the use of the Arvin Union School District Cooperative Agreement with Sierra School Equipment Company through November 12, 2022. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.26. Approval of agreement with Southern California Edison on the infrastructure project 17-029 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? All right, Mr. Mr. Reeves. What was that? I'm sorry, what'd you say? Microphone, please. Could someone, Mr. President, come up and explain uh, what this is about? Uh, I'll ask. Ron Benedetti to do it, but this is the infrastructure and power to the college and Southern Cal Edison's role in developing and completing the infrastructure project. I'll let Ron finish. Uh, this portion of it has to do with the intersection and the work being uh, scheduled to be done out on 30th Street. We have to move the overhead wires underneath. So we had they had to develop prints. We paid them for that. Now this is their portion of the job that we have to pay Edison to do the the work underground. So how much is this gonna cost? I'm sorry? What's the cost? $257,865.48. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.27, approval to extend the use of Sean Kahn Consulting Company Incorporated, DBA SKC Company piggyback agreement through September 2nd, 2025 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 14.28, approval of project assignment amendment to Nolan Construction Services for project inspector of record services Discovery Lab project with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 14.29, approval of change orders for infrastructure 17 029 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.30, approval of change order for Sage Hall, 17-031 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.31, approval of change orders for Discovery Lab project, 17-039 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? So moved. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.32, approval of change orders for the campus security project 17-040 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.33, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the infrastructure project 17-029, Taft Electric Company, with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.34, approval to file notice of completion, resolution of acceptance, on the campus security project 17-040, Taft Electric Company with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? Second. Discussion? Advice? I approve. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 15, information items 15.1, progress report on corrective action plan to address the 2019-2020 audit findings that is in your packet. Please review this. Item 16, reports and announcements. 16.1, Academic Senate, Dan Ryder. Good evening, board members. I hope all's well. Uh, 
short report. Uh, last week, I was able to represent AVC at the Academic Senate California Community College Plenary. The plenary is held both in the fall and in the spring at the plenary resolutions are passed that offer positions of the Academic State Senate. In addition, there are workshops or breakouts on a variety of subjects. This particular theme of the fall plenary was teaching, learning, and governance in a hybrid world. In particular of interest, and that I'll share in, uh, information to the various constituent groups and other uh, avenues as, as needed, was the, uh, the focus on the legislation that's impacting teaching and learning. In addition, the ethnic studies requirement that is uh, that faces all the systems from CSU as it connects to community colleges. In addition, for the best practices on online teaching, and which includes accessibility and equity in online education. And finally, one of the <clears throat> excuse me the key themes was applying equity theory and equity practice and all that we're doing both in the classroom and our hiring processes. And so I appreciate the opportunity to go to the plenary and the, the board's support. Finally, the other theme that was ever present was the council and the recommendation for the academic senate to continue to build relationships with not only the campus constituents, but with also the board of trustees. Uh, in its, again, in its recommendation of academic and professional matters. Uh, and I continue to look forward and uh, building that positive relationship with the board and with President Knudsen. So thank you. Thank you. Central Valley College Federation of Teachers, Dr. Orberg. Good evening, everybody. It's really only been three weeks since the last meeting, so I don't have much new material to report. Um, the COVID pandemic continues. We've actually had a meeting that hasn't really focused on it. So I think that's a relief to all of us, but it does continue. Faculty and staff are still being exposed on campus. Students are still being exposed. And news that should surprise exactly no one, uh, quite a few faculty, staff, and students are struggling right now. Um, in lab this morning, as I walked around to all the tables with the students and asked them how they're doing, Nobody said good or anything enthusiastic. Um, they were all tired and worried and stressed. And you know, to some extent, November is always like that. Um, it's a tough part of the semester. There's all the term projects, there's exams, there's transfer applications. People are nervous about upcoming finals. But I have to say this did seem worse than usual and it, it was disappointing. Um, when I've spoken with faculty in the hallways and so forth, um, I'm receiving a lot of the same responses right now. There's a lot of weary people right now on this campus. Um, I did notice an acknowledgement in last week's academic affairs report from VP Saver of appreciation and respect for how much faculty do. Um, and it is kind of her to acknowledge the hard work of the faculty. Uh, but I would like to encourage the college administration to continue to think about how to best support faculty, staff, and students through the pandemic as it continues. I know we're all ready for it to end, but it hasn't quite ended yet. I would like to highlight a small bit of good news. A number of the students at the prison have finished their degrees from Cal State LA. Many of these students took AVC classes from AVC instructors. I actually taught there myself in 2019, and I have been so delighted to see press coverage of the graduate of the graduates, um, including recognizing some of my students. Uh, some of them have even been released from prison. All of this coverage showcases the transformative power of education. It's pretty extreme when we watch people graduating from college in the prison, but this kind of thing is happening on our campus as well. This is important. Faculty are so glad to serve and be part of transforming students' lives, whether it's in the prison, on the main campus, at Palmdale Online, or other locations. In closing, the faculty union is still here. We're still fighting to defend the rights and better the working conditions of the faculty. I'd like to donate the rest of my speaking time tonight to Ms. Ford. Thank you. Item 16.3, Animal Valley College Federation of Class Line Employees, Pam Ford.
Microphone. First and most importantly, I want to thank Rhonda for um, getting us the reports timely. And also, it's not, it's more than just classified reports. So it appears that we've been heard. So thank you. As president of the classified union, I am ultimately responsible for maintaining our charter and ensuring that our finances are in order. I am not allowed to slip in this area, both the national organization, the American Federation of Teachers and the state organization, the California Federation of Teachers maintain strict regulations regarding finances as the keepers of the treasury of these organizations. In order to participate in various aspects of the organization, our books have to be straight. And there's no wiggle room when it comes to allowing debt to grow. If per caps are late, we're notified immediately. As everyone knows, finances are the lifeblood of any organization. Antelope Valley College is well aware of maintaining proper finances and now allowing debt to accrue. As an example, when the district was made aware of an outstanding electric bill, immediate steps were made to correct that matter immediately, even though we were in a fiscal crisis at the time. Another example is when the district switched over to fiscal independence and the new banner system was employed for payroll, there were errors made, overpayments. Did the district allow either of those to carry debt over for years? No. The district required immediate resolution in both instances, which brings me to my point. Who is responsible for the treasury at Antelope Valley College? Who answers for the fact that since 2018, when PERB ruled in its decision, appeals were made and ruled on, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of PERB's decision. The decision is not being litigated, yet 7% interest has been accruing and there's been no attempt on the part of the district to satisfy this debt. Why has the district not at least mitigated a portion of its obligation by at least compensating those who have separated from the district, such as retirees or those who have left for other reasons? Those individuals could have been settled in 2018 when the decision was first issued. No, instead, there seems to be a deliberate decision to allow the 7% interest to grow for those individuals. And I have to ask why? Why does the Board of Trustees sanction the district to be fiscally irresponsible by not, by not satisfying its obligation? We are now going into December 20. 21. Moving into eight years of interest accruing, it is, not, it is unconscionable that the Board of Trustees is allowing this debt to grow and what's more, ignoring the court's decision. Let us ignore a decision and y'all are all over us like a duck on a June bug. I would ask, it is the district's intent, is it the district's intent to allow this interest to grow until the new president takes office as though somehow this is gonna remove responsibility from the individual who created the issue in the first place. What is the rationale behind the district not settling this matter? I'd just like to know. And so would my constituent group. Confidential management, supervisor, administrator, employees, Michelle Hernandez. Good evening. Um, for CMS, we're still in our very early stages of um, pulling together our new board. We met first um, our first meeting today. So we are moving forward in our plans and pulling um, information from our surveys and evaluations. Um, one of the things that I do want to bring to the board's attention is that there are many CMS who are working together collaboratively across campus for registration. Priority registration begins on Monday. There will be a huge registration week um, full of activities to get our students um, ready for the spring semester, uh, workshops, um, as well as virtual assistance and on-campus assistance. And then we are all collectively working together for the RegFest um, repeat event that we will have on December 6th. Thank you. Associated 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, we have our next meeting next Friday. Well, this Friday, actually. And it will be our last meeting for the semester, unless uh, we have an emergency or a closed door meeting. It will be the last one for the semester, like I just said. And um, during our last meeting, we had a couple of discussions and a couple of uh, items approved. The first one was that we approved the, uh, to move funds from one bank to another. The bank that we're moving it to is, is a bank that will incur interest. Uh, the last bank that we are moving it from did not incur interest at the time, so that's why we are moving it. Uh, we are still working on the volunteer program. Our advisor informed us that she was bringing someone in to assist with that task. Uh, we're hoping to have it up and running before the end of spring semester, as that is one of our goals for the 2021 to 2022 um, goals that we set. Uh, we, we, we approve student incentives to increase participation among, uh, in the school. Uh, you heard of one of the students or one of the incentives that we uh, approve, uh, the Constitution Day essay. Uh, the ASO officers, we discussed, we discussed the deaf studies courses and the modem that they're being offered in. Uh, a public comment was brought up a while ago and uh, one of our members was concerned about it, so he brought it back up again, and we discussed uh, why they were the only foreign language class to have to take uh, their classes over Zoom. Uh, we discussed the spring schedule and students possibly wanting to another area to socialize among themselves in. The library is a place where you study. Uh, the subway place is the place where people eat and talk amongst themselves. And we're looking for a place kind of like a mix of, among that for students. Uh, unfortunately, the Senator of Career Technical Education resigned. They had to prioritize what was uh, more important in their life. They were offered a job and they took the job and understandably they had to uh, focus on school, the children and the job. Uh, while it is sad to see them go, I am very happy that they were uh, offered and took on the job. The haunting of Marauder Street, the haunting on Marauder Street happening October 29th, and it was great. Um, several community members came and partook in it. I was there myself. It was a very fun and relaxing event for students to partake in in their costumes. And lastly, uh, we're looking into a continuous suicide awareness program. Uh, it came up last meeting. Uh, since we are entering the holidays, uh, this is a tough time for uh, uh, many students. And instead of just uh, having a suicide awareness program focused on the holidays, we were advised that maybe look at having a program throughout the year uh, in a continuous fashion. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Valley College Foundation, Diane Knipple. Um, good evening. The um, volunteer program, I believe the foundation, I have an employee who's gonna be helping um, that volunteer program. So uh, we're glad to participate. We know the community pretty well and maybe can make some connections for you. Um, just remember, this is the month of November. It's a lot of giving Tuesdays and giving days. So we are here to help our students um, have uh, great resources through the Hearts and Hands Pantry. And we do have two community partners that will match every dollar for dollar given. So um, please give frequently and often. Uh, even a dollar makes a difference. So thank you. Thank you. Office of Superintendent President, Mr. Knudsen. Just a couple of very quick things. Uh, first of all, I love the energy of the constitutional essay question that John Vento. I've had the opportunity to be in his classroom and it's hard to not walk out of the class with a smile on your face. He's an amazing instructor. And as you can tell, he usually doesn't need a microphone. <laughs> but uh, I'm so pleased that John has carried that over these nine years and continues to grow the program. It's a real uh, pleasure to see the growth with the students. Uh, Nashim, I might recommend if the volunteers are gonna work in conjunction with the college, to get board approved, they must go through HR and then they will be protected by the college and the college insurance as an enrolled student. 
and doing volunteer work either here on campus or in the community. Um, registration for spring begins on November 15th and we encourage everybody um, to get the word out, please. System-wide community college system of California is down 15% over 320,000 students. So we all need to pitch in. A um, couple of other things that are kind of fun. Uh, May 6th is commencement this year, May 6th at 7 p.m. in the stadium um, for the class of 2022. On Wednesday, May 4th, we are going to invite back the classes of 2020 and 2021 if they want to cross the the platform and receive the jacket and get their picture taken and be in regalia, we're gonna make that opportunity available to them. Um, ABC has been nominated for the class of 2023 for the Aspen Prize for Community College Excellence. We've been chosen as one of the top 150 colleges in the country. And we have been nominated to compete for a million dollar prize with other colleges. California has a lion's share of colleges across the country because we have the lion's share of community colleges in the country. And lastly, and to all of my fellow veterans, on this Thursday, November 11th, the college will be closed in, in remembrance of Veterans Day. And it began at the end of World War I when on the 11th day, at the 11th hour in the 11th month, the guns of World War I fell silent. And it was first recognized as Armistice Day and then became Veterans Day a few years later in action of Congress. I ask that you remember all of the folks in your lives who have served and remember them either outwardly or in your thoughts. And when you remember them in your thoughts, put a face to the name, please. It's important. Thank you. Thank you. Board member comments, Ms. Rivera. Thank you. First, I would like to congratulate my fellow students uh, for winning the Constitutional Day Essay Contest and also thank Professor Vento and all the people involved in reading the essays and putting on the contest. We're very grateful for you all. Um, today is also First Generation College, First Generation College Student Day um, for all first generation students. So I would also like to extend a happy First Generation College Day to all those students. And I am also proud to be a First Generation College student. Um, thank you, Dr. Vines and everyone involved in trying to improve en enrollment. We do appreciate your hard work and we're seeing it pay off. I would also like to encourage everyone to participate in the winter coat drive and toy drive if you can. And thank, and um, I would also like to extend my thanks to all veterans for their service, especially with this upcoming Veterans Day. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, thank the Associated Student Union uh, for the consideration and work of continuous mental health support year round. That is a big deal. And I'm very proud of uh, you all for thinking about that and trying to put some things in place to support students. Uh, second of all, Veterans Day, I wanted to uh, remind everyone of that. You know, we all have our own opinions, perspectives, and points of view, but it doesn't change the fact that we live in the greatest country on this planet. And it is definitely due to the sacrifice of our service men and women. Uh, so I agree with President Knudsen, please uh, keep those who have served in your thoughts. And last but not least, um, the constitutional essay winners. I think it's really important, uh, as we heard uh, Mr. Reeves say earlier, it is a republic. And it's very important uh, for all of us to understand what the constitution is about and how important it is. And as a former English teacher, I think any essay contest is a great contest. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Um, I wanna wish uh, all the veterans a happy Veterans Day. I come from a military family and a gold star family, which means you lost a service member in, in your family. So happy 
Veterans Day. Uh, Lancaster is going to have a ceremony at nine o'clock in Lancaster Cemetery. Palmdale is going to have a ceremony at 11 o'clock in front of City Hall in Palmdale. So if you get a chance, uh, go to one of those ceremonies. And I want to uh, wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving uh, out in the audience, on the board. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving. Be careful and be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gaines. Najim, am I, am I pronouncing that correct? It's uh, pronounced Najim. Najim. Anyway, um, I can't agree with you more about the the impact that COVID has had on the social, emotional, and the mental health of our young people. I do have a curriculum or a program that you might want to look into. Um, you, you can at least research this program. It's called Hope squad and maybe it's something that um, the community college could, could purchase to benefit our young people because I think we're seeing it at all ages from elementary on up through college that ha are having some um, anxiety and depression after this COVID. So we want to address that. I also want to um, just, you know, uh, acknowledge it's it, Thursday is a day off, but yet we don't want to forget why we have that day. I too came from a military family and um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very um, sentimental every year because my father, my grandfather and my uncles all served in the military. And so I think about them a lot on Veterans Day and I'm sure as do many. So. Uh, it's great, as President Knudsen said, to put a face with that, with that name. So, um, uh, and I just want to say that um, a week or so ago, we opened the Sage um, Learning Center, and it was a very proud moment. I felt so, you know, I I really couldn't put it in words, just because I was one of those students, probably back when it was called. What did you call it, Mr. Knudsen? Tumbleweed Tech. Uh, I never thought of it quite as Tumbleweed Tech. I thought I was at a pretty big place at the time, but um, I, I was absolutely amazed at the Learning Center and, and the uh, possibilities and the capacity that we're going to build in a lot of our young people who, who take advantage of that building. So uh, that, that was quite an accomplishment and, and, and very very pleased. It was. It's not to mention how beautiful it is. Um, makes me want to come back to school, which Mr. Knudsen uh, reminded me today that I'm still have an email as a student. So why not? Um, and I just too want to say um, I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving and gets to spend some quality time with family. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Buffalo. Let me say the um, Sage Hall building and that we uh, were in and celebrated last week is just spectacular visually. It is an amazing building, both outside and inside. And I'm not so sure that it would have been a great learning environment for me because there's so many windows. I'd have probably been checking out the birds and the butterflies and people walking across campus, but it is really open. It's really airy. And I think it was amazing. It's much, much uh, more impressive than I had expected it to be when it was first designed. That's it. Thank you. There is no need to go back into closed session. And the date of our next meeting is December 10th, 2021. That is a Friday. And it is at 8 a.m. So a little bit of a change of pace because the legislature wants to keep us on our toes. And we are adjourned. <laughs>